Okay, so it's time for another bad video electronics. What we're going to look at right now is grounding and the point of referencing with grounding. So as you're probably quite familiar with, grounding is used to give a return path, a common return path for electricity, and we use that for predominantly a safety mechanism. But equally important, we do a grounding for the ability to reference. So let's take a look at these three circuits that I've drawn up here. So item number one, what we see here is a commonly referred to as a common ground. And then this over here on the right is called an earth ground. They're both synonymous with being a ground. There's no difference between the two, but there is a difference when I have this type of ground. This schematic is called a chassis ground. And the chassis ground is where we schematically attach all of the components of a particular item, machine, group together. A very good example of a chassis ground would be the metal frame of a car. You have four rubber tires that keeps the car off the ground. That would mean that the entire frame is commonly bonded to the negative side of the battery. And then you have the grounds on your left hand side and that's what you have there. Now let's look at this first circuit. Remember anytime you have a plus and a minus we follow the plus and whatever side is closer to that plus is going to be more positive. Anything more negative will be on the bottom side. So see how the minus the minus? These minuses are closer together. So the very first problem that we look at, and this has always taken a little bit of thought to get through, is let's take a look at this point right here. What we're looking at right here is both a plus and a minus. Well, how can it be? So how can we have both a plus and a minus in the same circuit? Now, as I draw this, notice that the current flow in this particular example is going from plus to minus. And this is our conventional current flow. Well, as I draw the circuit, I am showing that the electrons are leaving. And I know this is not 100% correct because we know that electrons truly leave the minus but we say that in conventional flow, current is going from the plus to the minus. So as it comes in, this will be more plus. As it comes into the next resistor, that's more plus. And as it leaves this resistor, the back end of it's more minus. So that's why right here you have a minus on the exit side of that resistor and a positive side on the intake of that resistor. But what we're saying is we can have both a plus and minus, but they're not both plus and minus. If I were to take a multimeter, and I draw a multimeter right here. And I draw a box, and then, then I make this a common. So in the middle of your multimeter, you have a common. And I take that common, and I attach right to there. And then I take the positive side, which is on the multimeter that reads V and ohms, and I attach right there. I will get, for in this case, let's say they're all exactly the same value, I would get 4 volts. And the answer would be positive, because we are telling you that I am referencing at this bottom layer right here. As I reference and put my common, hence the term common on our multimeter at that point, I'm reading across the top resistor from the commons on the bottom, which is definitely more negative in this case, and it gave me a positive four volts. If I schematically try to draw that voltmeter, what you will see is just a circle with a V and an attachment like that. That is the same schematic representation to say that I'm measuring the voltage across that resistor. Now when we draw a schematic and I want to have grounds, I can also do this and I'm going to redraw that same circuit. But now watch what happens when I redraw the circuit. There's the first resistor, the second resistor, third resistor, ground. Minus side, ground here. Now so what that tells me, if I follow electron flow in this particular example, electrons are going to leave the minus, go through a ground. Now we don't see where this is occurring at. We don't know if this is a big piece of wire behind the scenes. All we know is it's common, and hence a common means they're all touching together, and the electrons are coming up through, up through, and then back to this way. So the schematic and circuit that we've drawn in the blue is identical to the schematic on the left, the black one. What you don't see and what I don't see according to this electronic schematic is that we have a common point reference. If I had 4 volts here, 4 volts here, and 4 volts here, boy this is looking bad on my part, I would have 4 volts here, 4 volts here, and 4 volts here. Identical setup. 
Okay, so that kind of explains the pluses and minuses. Flow. Now, it doesn't matter if you believe plus to minus or minus to plus. As long as you're consistent, we have a reference point. Okay, so let's talk about where the placement of ground is at to make our lives easier. Notice in this case, we're going to have three nodes. Node 1, 2, and 3. Actually, I've got these points here. Let's get a multimeter. I'm going to draw my multimeter right here. I'm going to read the voltage. I'm going to take the common, and I'm going to attach it to right there. The common always goes to where the ground is at. I'm going to take my red lead, and I'm going to read right here. If I keep the same four values, this will read a minus four volts. That power supply will tell me it's minus four. If I take that red lead and attach up to here, it also will read four, but this time it will read plus four. And then finally, if I move it up to the top point here, it's going to read from the top red point to the bottom 8 volts. So the net magnitude is still 12. You will always have 12 volts. If I start with 12, I end with 12. But the reference that I'm telling everybody to measure from is here. So anything from the ground up will be a positive value. Anything lower than that will be a minus value. So grounding and the references for grounding will give us a very good indication of to what values we should have there.